San Francisco uh, is a melting pot and has been. Um, the, they have a, a huge uh, Chinese uh, uh, community there. Um, they have a very big Italian community. Um, they have a very, very large Jewish community. And you just cannot get away from uh, getting involved uh, with, with the music that, uh, that comes from uh, not only the, uh, the radio or growing up listening to uh, uh, jazz stations like I did. Um, and uh, I, I did go to church. I, I did go to shul. I did go to temple. I did go to, and, and I only did it because of the music. The religious songs that I learned early on uh, were all from my going to different churches in San Francisco. Um, I went to Catholic church with uh, some of my friends. Uh, uh, my mom and dad were uh, part of a congregation in the um, Amy Zion Methodist Church. Uh, and uh, I also uh, went to uh, temple and to shul with some of my friends. I was uh, I was a sponge, <laughs> and uh, I, I uh, sometimes the, the music in, for instance, in the Baptist church and the Holy Roller churches, was so dynamic and, and so um, spiritually uh, involved that it is frightening. And as a little kid, uh, I, I used to get frightened when the when the congregation would rise up. Uh, and sing uh, along with uh, whoever was playing. Uh, and it was, uh, it was frightening as a little kid. And then uh, later on, of course, I got to, uh, to really enjoy that, that aspect of, of religious music. And that kind of, uh, uh, that's kind of stayed with me. And so when I, when I got a chance to record uh, some of the, uh, the music that I heard in Temple and in Shul. Um, I was interested in, in the music that was emotional, so I recorded the, the Kol Nidri. First I got the words, uh, and then uh, I went into the studio to record uh, the, the songs. Percy Faith, who was the uh, orchestrator and the, uh, the orchestra uh, leader, um, who provided the, the music for me uh, was Jewish, and uh, Mitch Miller, uh, who was also in the studio helping me. And uh, along the way, they, they would uh, make sure that I was pronouncing the words properly. But in fact, the two songs that I chose to sing are so um, emotional, uh, emotionally driven that I got, I would say, I got 95% of the, the songs, uh, I mean, the words uh, uh, correct. Um, and, and there was a lot of ad-libbing going on uh, in, in, in those, uh, those performances. Uh, that's something that I, I learned from the, the cantors, is that uh, the, the, there's, a, there's a chord that you, you can sing on and you can you go up and down the scale, up and down the scale as much as you want to, in order to convey uh, uh, the emotion of the song. And that really, as a kid, you know, trying to impress people vocally, that was one of the things that really interested me, is that I could just go a little crazy uh, vocally. And, uh, but, but I had the guidance, the wonderful guidance of Percy Faith, who was a, a, a meticulous musician. He was a marvelous musician, but, but he, was, he was meticulous. In fact, I remember asking him, uh, Percy, how should I sing this song? And he said, the right way. <laughs> I was, well, <laughs> as a little kid, I went, oh, OK. <laughs> it was all came together, and I was able to put aside any kind of learning or studying or that I had done, and to be very naked, just pure emotion. Fortunately, uh, by the time I was 23, I had acquired 
uh, a good deal of, of technical knowledge about my, my voice so that I knew what I could do and what I couldn't do. And that one uh, composition, Cold Leader, gave me a chance to, to let it all out, hold back nothing. And, and all the little parts of the song uh, or that, we, uh, that we chose, the parts that we chose to, to sing, uh, were very special. You know, it's 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 soft and lovely. It just goes on and on and on. It's just a, it's a wonderful vehicle, um, and you sing so much wrong. I sang so many wrong notes and and so many uh, even wrong words. But the emotion was there. And to this day, there are a lot of songs that I've recorded um, that, that it wasn't really good recording, but the emotion was there. And people, uh, people enjoy it. And they, they ask me to, to, to repeat that performance. And I go, well, I'll repeat it, but this time I'll sing the right words. <laughs> I've sung it many times. Uh, and a lot of times I've sung it with, uh, with cantors who say, okay, let's, uh, how did you do this part? Because it is a very big, ranging, uh, sort of a, a musical composition. It isn't, it isn't just, you can make it as big or as short, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And uh, I didn't realize that, uh, that we had, we had shortened it and made a version of it that was uh, listenable and that we could record. Uh, and then over the years, I heard other uh, singers sing completely different parts of it that I never knew existed. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. I got the feeling that certain people felt it was inappropriate. Uh, I never, uh, I've never gotten over the years any flack about uh, singing religious music in, in places uh, where it, it's, it's, it's unseemly, maybe. Um, uh, fortunately. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, people feel that, uh, that it may be un inappropriate. But, but I didn't really care. And, uh, and I still I have certain, certain priorities that in my life that I, I really am very kind of uh, adamant about. And, and singing religious music and, and situations for people, uh, I think uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it shows them another side of me, uh, something that, uh, that has been a part of my life always. But, but I, I've never, I've never had a chance to uh, to show it. I think it's important, and yet I would like to say that it, when I did it, it was the most natural thing in the world for me to do. It, it was not against anything that I that I was ever uh, taught or, or that I believed in. It was just. It was as natural as my sitting here talking to you. I'm going to sing the Kol Nidre, and then after that, I'm going to sing, you know, um, um, Babalu. <laughs>